Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Art of Thomas podcast. The podcast you're about to listen to now is from another Torum user, a very interesting person whose objective is to build his own blockchain, which is in, like a, such an ambitious project that I love how he dares to dream this big. Most people wouldn't even think about trying something so big and such a enormous project. So I love that he actually uh, not only dares to dream big, but he's actually taking the steps in order to get it done. He made like a 12 year plan to, to make this happen. And I, on, at least for me, I would like to support him in any way I can, because I love people that just go for what they want in spite of what everybody else might uh, consider to be slightly unrealistic, maybe. I don't know. I hope he, he, he does it. He's also doing a newsletter, trying to make his step-by-step -step process and all the stuff he's learning in the blockchain crypto world. So for me, at least, I love this chance to talk with him. I hope you guys get from him the same feeling I got after the chat and I'm very certain we will have to do this again because we didn't even get to talk about all this stuff. It was more of a getting to know each other while we were drawing. There was something else we did and it was interesting. It was an interesting podcast format. I loved it. I hope I can do more of this. And without any more further ado, I present to you Flying Rules the future creator of the flying coin and a very good person, lander, and now also a friend. Enjoy. Hello. Hello. Hey, man, what's up? How you doing? I'm good. I can't see your screen. You can't see my screen. I cannot. Dang. I am showing my video. Oh, my, my, my screen screen, share screen. Hold on, let me try to, let's see here. You can see my face though, right? Uh, no. Oh, interesting. I can see your face. Oh, really? And I can see my face on my Zoom thing right now. So that's kind of weird. Yeah, maybe it's something on my end, perhaps. Yeah, because I can see you and a piece of paper. Yes. I've got two, two things showing. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I see you now. Oh, how's it going? I'm good, yeah. Good. Uh, I'm, my name is Ben, by the way. I, I live in Chicago. <laughs> so, what's up, dude? I'm going to put these headphones on so I can hear you better. Yeah, I'm going to turn this thing off. Also. Okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry for that. It's the first time that I'm trying to get the recording and the thing on my physical paper at the same time. Oh, no worries. How am I coming? You can, can you hear me fine? Yeah, I am. All good. All good. All right. All right. Let's see here. Get my trusty pen. So your, your graphics tablet broke recently? Yeah, well... It's a bit of, a, of a, an interesting story because I have a, you know, a Windows Surface. Okay. And I, I've been doing, I've been using that for a, for a while and that one broke down. Um, but my girlfriend's, in my girlfriend's mother's house, I found an old Wacom tablet. So I've been using that one. Oh, nice. A Wacom. Nice. Yes. Yes. It's a very old one, but it, it, it was working. So I was like, cool. I'm just going gonna, gonna to use this one. And I, I think I used it for like a year and it started giving me problems. And now it's, it's unusable. So that sucks. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. No, nah, it's fine, man. I made the um, rush decision of ordering an um, iPad Pro, which I always wanted. And when my tablet broke, I was like, okay, this is the time to, to do it. And I spent my savings and now we're back into lockdown. So 
I have no savings and no income. So it's an interesting time. <laughs> Dang. So are you are you in Australia? Where where are you? Yes, I'm I'm in, in Sydney. And fortunately we we went into lockdown, but it's supposed to be only for a couple of weeks. So hopefully after that I can go back busking again. Was there like a big um a big surge of like the new COVID variant or what? There were a couple Is there were a, a couple of cases. I think there was like 30 or maybe less. So it was, it was not a big surge, but they were scared. Wow. If they didn't stop it now, it would eventually turn into something worse. That's so much different from like America. Like we have like thousands of cases. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> wow. Per per day. Um, okay, so if I wanted to show my screen. Yes. And it to be on your screen as well. Should I do a share screen or what do you, what do you recommend? I think so. Like if I if I'm sharing right now, I'm sharing this here. See here. Right. And then the, that takes over the whole screen. Takes over everything, right? So how did you do what you're doing where you have two at once? Okay, so you know what the share screen button is? What if I do on a little arrow on the share screen? Yeah. And that's the option that says multiple participants. Yeah, let's try that. Okay, so if I go to Zoom. So you, you usually use paint to, to draw? Yeah, yeah, that's my preferred method of drawing. Okay, wow. let's see here. Okay. Stop share. Let's try again. Okay. If I click share and then I click advanced, maybe. Contact from second camera files basic. Do you have the option that says multiple uh, ticked? I don't see that option. I see share sound, optimize for video clip, and then I have an advanced. Hmm. I wonder if there's a way to make my screen just be something that uh, is on my. Let's see, stop video pen, hide selfie, rename. I should have tested this out beforehand. Yeah, let's it's see. cool. It's an interesting new experiment. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, because if I do do share, it does the same thing. But maybe there's an option down here. Hmm. Let's click the arrow. Cool. More. Shoot, I can't figure it out. Hmm. If I do. So what I did is on the um, on the share screen button, there's a little arrow, and on top of advanced settings, it says multiple participants can share simultaneously. On, on advanced. Okay, so I click advanced. No, but it's it's above the advanced option. It's not in the advanced option. Oh uh, yeah. See, like my so my share screen option is just a share screen arrow, and that's it. And then there's nothing above the advanced option. Oh, okay. So it's almost like we have like different some versions, maybe versions. Uh, what this? What if I do? Well, if I'm like. What we can do is I can, uh, we do the Zoom with your screen on, and then okay. I record mine one separately, and then I put it together in the edit. Or you could, you could, um, okay, so if I do a share screen where I have my, like, okay, so I've got, if I do it where it's like mine, but then can't you do it, can you, can you maximize the little video? Uh, let's see. And just like make it much bigger, where it's like. Oh, what? Oh, yeah, no. Like, can you drag the corner and like make 
increase the size of it. Because I've done that before with share screen before. Yes. It's worked. The only thing I'm not sure is that oh, what happened? It all went away. <laughs> oh boy. Um, I love the yeah. Like the little that, videos, usually when I when I record the Zoom meetings, the little videos don't don't appear in the recording. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. So let me see. How did you get it set up so you have two? So you have two, because like. Because one is my phone. Ah, uh, I see. Okay, that and makes I, sense. On my phone, I have it. I have it muted. It's only video. I'm wondering if I can just join twice. Yeah, yeah. That that's what I did. Or I'm wondering if I can do it so that my instead of my camera, it's just whatever's on my screen. That's got to be a possibility, right? It should be. No, it's not though. I don't think I've ever done that before. Hmm. Well, just I, I'll record my video separately, and we do the Zoom with your screen on, and then I'll just add it. Um, okay, and, and we'll just chat and whatever, and I'll draw. What do you What do you want to draw today? I don't know. I'm open to, to suggestions. Okay. Um, shoot. Uh, let's see here. Well, first, I got to reopen Microsoft Paint. <laughs> Sorry, I can't get this to work. I feel um, technologically inept right now. Yeah, I know. I, I have never is, tried this before, so it's... It is quite embarrassing. <laughs> we'll get better at it. Yeah, yeah. We can, we can always edit this, this part out. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you can see what I've got. Yes. Okay. So, um, I don't know, man. What? Uh, let's see here. We've got. I've been drawing a lot of, um, I guess, kind of like. I know I haven't I haven't made like a new drawing recently. Uh, I basically have been doing like a lot of uh, stuff, kind of just like adding some annotations to things that I've already drawn. So I don't really have anything on top of mind, but we can see here. We could try to do um, we could try to do a drawing. Um, we could try to do a drawing of like, I don't know, of like the, uh, the city in which the other lives. So you could try to do a drawing of the city of Chicago and I could do a drawing of Sydney. Okay. That might be too much detail. I don't know if that's like yeah, too much. Also, I, I have no idea what Chicago looks like. <laughs> yeah, no, I would have to pull up a reference image. Um, mm -hmm. no, that's a good point. So what about, uh, I don't know, you come up with something. Tell me, tell me what, what's on your mind. So you're like in lockdown right now. How long have you been locked down for? Uh, it's been a couple of days only. It started Sunday and here is Tuesday. So yeah, like two days. And I, how long do you think it's going to go for? Well, they say until Friday 9th of July. So it's only supposed to go for two, for two weeks. Um, I can, you can still go out, but everything's okay. closed. Every, most of the stuff is closed. And I... I tried to go busking and it's it's horrible because there's no one there's no one there. There's no one out. Yeah. Yeah, it takes me like I don't know 3 4 hours just to get back the money that I spent on like bus and the train. Jeez. Yeah. That's that sounds not fun. No, no it's not fun. <laughs> times are tough right now, huh? Yeah, but hope, um, hopefully it will only be for a couple, a couple, a couple of weeks. Hopefully. Sure, sure. Yeah, wishing you the best on that, man. Uh, it sounds terrible. I actually saw your Patreon. Uh, I was thinking about getting, getting a subscription on there to, to help you out, to help brother out. So I'll be, I'll be signing up. I haven't used Patreon in like five years, so my, <laughs> my payment details were out of date. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, no, I, I haven't. I have never used pay Patreon. Someone suggested that I, that I should, and I was like, "Why not? Let's let's try it." Um, let's see here. So uh, I don't, I don't, I don't want the podcast to be me complaining about not being able to uh, 
to work. So tell me something about you. I would like to to get to, to know you better. Okay. Um, so as I said, I live in Chicago. Yeah. I am, I'm, I'm a public accountant. So I studied accounting okay. in college. Um, and I am pretty, I mean, I, I was, uh, I studied finance as well in college. What if we just do free form drawing? Just draw whatever you want. We'll just both, we'll just both draw whatever comes to mind. Sure. And then we'll just <laughs> that way. There's no pressure to to do anything specific. Yeah. And we can focus more on the on the conversation too. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just gonna basically just do like mostly patterns and stuff. Um, Sounds good. <laughs> so yeah, so I I'm I'm originally from Indiana. I grew up on a Christmas tree farm. Oh wow. Um, <laughs> yeah. So when I When I came to Chicago to visit the school that I ended up going to uh, for university, it's like a totally different environment than like growing up on a farm. And I just loved it. So I love the city mm -hmm. life. I feel like um, I was born to live in a city. I just love the, okay. the hustle and bustle. And obviously uh, with COVID, it's been a bit tough uh, because, you know, Chicago went on lockdown pretty hard. But we've just recently started opening up again. So I was actually on the train uh, just like 10 minutes ago on the way uh, back from work. So in my train, I, I take the subway or we call it the L here in Chicago. Okay. I, I was because it's like elevated tracks. So they call it the L elevated. <laughs> oh, that's and cool. that's cool. And uh, yeah, so it took, uh, it was running a little slow. So I was like rushing down here to make sure that I didn't blow you off a second time. <laughs> I feel terrible about that first time. So, um, but yeah, and I, I started getting into, I guess I started getting into crypto um, in 2017, uh -huh. uh, like at the, at the end of the year. Um, I didn't really buy anything other than Tron tokens. I don't know. When did you get into crypto? When did you start like getting into it? Uh, like I remember my friends telling me about it a while back when I was still living in Argentina. But it, I bought my first one year 2017, probably. Okay. Uh, okay. What was your like first token you ever bought? Ah, uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Uh, the big, the real stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I started with Bitcoin and then. That was the moment where all the ICOs were, were popping up and I had this amazing, brilliant idea that it was better to buy the coins when they were coming up because that's where you make the most money. And of course, that didn't work at all. <laughs> yeah, I think like what the crash happened maybe in like March of 2018, that was when everything went yeah. to zero. <laughs> Yeah, I basically just bought Tron tokens, uh -huh. TRX. Um, But hold, hold on, why why you start with Tron? That seems like unusual. Yeah, the um, it was one of my coworkers at the time. Uh, I didn't. I had knew about Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, I'd known about it for a while, but I was sort of like, I don't really know what that's all about. Uh, it seems pretty interesting, but. I was just like, you know, busy with other things and it seemed like kind of like a risky investment. So I wanted to kind of wait and see. And then one of my coworkers comes into work one day and he's just like pumped about like Justin's son <laughs> and <laughs> like the, the decentralized internet. And he's just going on and on, like all day talking to me about decentralized internet and like what it will mean like for the future. And it's literally just going to change the world. Um, and little did I know that Ethereum is literally that, but legit. <laughs> and, and so I just like, I was like, well, how do I buy that? How do I buy Tron? Like, I want to buy some Tron. Yeah. And he's like, okay. So he helped me set up a Coinbase account. And then like, I set up a Binance account and I, I bought Ethereum just so that I could buy Tron with it. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So I bought like a decent amount of Ethereum, which I should have kept <laughs> and i i traded it all for tron and i had like a bunch of tron and i felt 
pretty excited. And then I just watched the price of Tron gradually go from like 70 cents per TRX to like yeah. one, one cent. <laughs> <laughs> oh and I just God. held on to it. So I, I still have all of my Tron from, from like back in 2017 when I bought it. And um, I'm going to hold on to it forever, I think, as just like a... <laughs> just like a token of my experience yeah. you know it's like um it's one of those things you know you, the more i learn about kind of the tr tron network and like the ecosystem it seems like a lot of it's pretty artificial um and uh -huh. kind of like based on hype but without any like real like execution of a real like decentralized network um okay. but I don't know. It does seem like there are developers on the network that are developing decentralized apps. It's just like you already have Ethereum doing the exact same thing. I mean, I'm, my understanding is that the Tron white paper was basically just like a copy and paste of the Ethereum white paper. Oh, okay. I, I did, didn't didn't know that. It's basically just like completely plagiarized. The it's basically just like an Ethereum clone, just right. with like a like a celebrity behind the scenes instead of like um, you know like a real computer science person. Mm. So so anyways, but I got back into it this summer when I started hearing about decentralized finance, um, uh, and yeah. that's that stuff got me pretty interested, uh, and then I started buying some more tokens and stuff and just kind of like i don't know do you use Co coinbase by chance i i did when i first when i first started that that's how i i bought well actually when i first started i i was using the bitcoin AT, atms oh cool yeah you put you put cash and it sends you it sends you bitcoin i had a i had a lot of travel opening a coinbase account because um I I'm I was born in Argentina, but I live in Australia. So when I opened my account, they registered as if I was Australian. But when they asked me for my passport, it's an Argentinian passport, and that apparently causes some sort of problem, and they can't fix it. And I try to contact with them, and they they don't get back to me. I think they're very busy, and the support system is not. Is, can't uh, solve this, this very simple issue. So, so for, what? For a while, what did they do? I was using my like I opened an account with my government uh, ID because ah. she's Australian, so that one was possible. But I haven't used it for a while now. I've been using to buy my Bitcoin. I've been using one that's called Crypto.com. Okay, CRO tokens. Yes. Well, not not the token. I use it to, to just to to buy Bitcoin when when I can. Just to buy Bitcoin, okay. Yeah, because that one, uh, the system you could you could be like, I live in Australia, but I am from I am from Argentina, so it had that 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 very simple option that Coinbase doesn't have, that allows me In to open my own account. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, you should at least check out um, Coinbase for their like coinbase earn stuff where you get free you get free tokens um they they give you like free cryptocurrency whenever they like release new coins you just have to like watch a video and um answer really simple multiple choice questions so that was like my kind of entry point back in was i'd gotten an email from coinbase and they're like we miss you we haven't seen you in a while <laughs> uh check out our website log in and i had like 0. 0.00001 ethereum on there but then like there was options you could earn i i earned like a bunch of tezos tokens okay. um just for like watching a video and answering a couple questions and then i earned like tokens in like eight or nine other like cryptocurrencies for doing the same thing and that was back in the summer. So now like all that free crypto, it's like worth over a hundred dollars. Um, 
and they're still coming out with new ones like just recently i got like some they just like had like some for i think it's called uma i don't know there's so many Mm. cryptocurrencies nowadays but um yeah yeah, it was you should check it out if if you still have access to that account you should at least check out their earn options and see if you can earn some free stuff because i mean it's free money true yes i i i i've checked that um you need to have your account like verified i think to get them oh and my girlfriend was like i'm okay with you using my like the, my name to open the the account but to get verified you have to send them a picture of the like uh, id or something i see and she was not she's she's not very convinced about the whole crypto scene so she's not there yet <laughs> no, no, no. i'm hoping that um the stuff that we already bought by the end of the year will show show her that it was a good idea but she's still very suspicious and now with the recent crash that we're having it's not a topic she's very willing to talk about <laughs> i see i see yeah. that makes sense yeah it, it probably could be tough uh in in that situation i can imagine um especially because like it, you know it seems like your um your art is doing amazing on the torum platform but it's you're getting paid in torum you know xtm yeah. tokens which yeah. you can't actually yet convert into real money yeah um so that's like kind of a tough spot to be because i can imagine you saying like well yeah they're worth eight cents per xtm but it's really not worth anything until it's actually tradable yeah so, 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 so. she she she's always like well but you you can buy groceries with it and like yeah technically no <laughs> <laughs> dang yeah that's let's do that is that's tough that's a tough spot to be in i do not envy your situation <laughs> no it's a, it's a in, interesting times i think it's a moment in time where it's a, yeah it's, have to ride the waves and hopefully at some stage it's I a guess. test yeah Yes. Right. True. Right. <laughs> true. Yeah, I actually have a ton of a ton of friends, artist friends, that I've been trying to get them to try Torum. But yes, they they all are very not skeptical, but they they don't find it uh, useful until uh, the money is tradable and, it, and you can actually do stuff with it. But I I always tell them like because it's right now it's not it's not there yet it's why it's so important to start now yeah yeah like getting in on the ground level yeah. it's like that's how you make the most uh the most gains yeah yeah that's that's what i, I try to tell them but it's it, it's hard like if you can imagine like how many followers do you have on torin torum like close to 8,000, 9,000 followers or something? Yeah, I think I'm getting close to 9,000 now. Like, how would that compare to, like, other social media accounts for you? Yeah, no, it's uh, nothing I've ever seen before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, like, way more. It's, like... Yeah, like, not even close. <laughs> not like, even close. Dude. I, I've been posting my drawings on Instagram for years, and I have, like, my friends and family, and that's it. Dude, seriously. Yeah. That's yeah, the crazy. thing. It's like you're because you're it's a totally um it's like an it's like a new market. Yeah. And yeah. it's completely global. Mm. And the the whole like uh NFT technology is such a a game changer for artists. Because now it's not only that I can post my drawings, but I can actually give it to people. And people can take them and carry them in their digital wallet. It's incredible. And they can, they can pay you for them instantly, yes. basically, like if they want to, which is really, yeah, it's crazy. I saw like, um, I saw a post by an artist that I was following on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I still follow them because their art is beautiful. But yeah. uh, they, they said that like they don't want to do NFTs because it's like bad for the environment. What? 
Uh, yeah, no, and because of the whole thing, like with Bitcoin being bad for the environment, uh, but bit, but Bitcoin is a proof of work protocol, and like most, I mean, you know, so you have your, um, you know, it looks like Wax blockchain is super popular for like, I would say, like amateur and like high volume, like NFT art. Yeah, and like that's. That is like not bad for the environment. Like it's, at least my understanding is it's like a sort of like a hybrid proof of like stake kind of shared. I don't know. I don't actually don't know how it works, but I know it uses the yeah. uh, inter. <laughs> it uses like the interplanetary file system. Oh yeah, uh, yes, I, I I use that IPFS. Yeah, uh, but I guess I don't actually know. To be honest, I don't actually know uh, like how it works. <laughs> yeah, I I know that like you can you can stake your wax and you can you get rewarded for it, but yes, like I have. So that's not probably. Really so it's probably proof of stake then, right? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and the thing with NFT also that is very very important to know for artists is that if I give you an NFT and then you sell it to someone else, you can set it up so that like a small percentage of that secondary sale still goes to the person who created the NFT in the first place. Which yeah, that, that's... that doesn't doesn't happen in any other medium when you like if you sell you a drawing and then you sell it like the physical drawing. That doesn't happen. I don't see anything from the secondary market. Dude, that's like such a cool thing yeah. about it. And then it's like you, like over time, it's like you could be collecting essentially royalties yeah. um, on any sale of that NFT, especially like you, you seem to be putting out a decent number of MF, NFTs. Uh, like how how many, like how do you uh, how do you keep it all straight, man? It seems like uh, that's a, there's like a lot you're putting out a lot of content. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really impressed. It's really impressive. Thank you. I started doing like one a day a couple of months ago, and but like I do one drawing every day, but then there's like usually. Like in a on a post that doesn't do great, there's like 20 people maybe that want the that that drawing, and sometimes it goes as high as like 50. Wow. So it's it's the same drawing, but I, I have depending on how many people want it, I mint it um, more times. So yeah, I have I, I have done thousands probably by now. So if you're minting, let's say 50 uh, NFTs. Do you have to do an individual click for each minting or can you just like automate the whole thing? You can, you can set up the amount that you want. Like you can, I can put like mint a hundred. Uh, but also what I do is I, for every drawing, I have like different levels of the drawing. So I have the normal, the normal drawing for people who just share my, my post. And um, that, that, that's like the free version. And then if you tip one coin, you know, you get the same drawing, but with a, with a frame, and then you can get the, the signature. And uh, now I'm doing ones with the, that have a little animation to them. And for each level, it's, it's like more rare. So I mint less of them. Okay. But I have to mint each of each level individually. So it's it's a little a, it takes me a little bit of time of just sitting down and doing all the minting and then I have to grab all the wax uh, accounts and put them on a spreadsheet because they're like okay all these get the free one all these get the frame one and then I have to the transfer I have to do it one by one. Oh man, yeah, that the transfer is one at a time, right? To yes. the individuals. Yes. And you you need all their wax accounts, but so when you get their wax account one once though right if they want another nft like do you have it like sort of like a 
almost like a customer profile then like or do you have to just redo it every time i have the the people that i see that join frequently i i save it but there's a ton of people that just can come in for like once or twice and those those ones are i i don't save them because otherwise i would have a very long list and it would be hard to find everyone so i always encourage people to in each each post just put your wax so it's easy easier for me to just copy paste copy paste that makes sense yeah 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 because then you just have the you have like the wax count right there yeah because that that's the most um tedious and annoying part have you uh minted nfts on other platforms besides wax no, I was looking into um, Ethereum because that that's like the the biggest one it seems. Mm-hmm. But the problem is like I created my account, and the problem is the, the transaction fees. They are very very big, and um, right now. Yeah. I yeah, remember, the gas. Yeah, to verify gas my account, fees. I had to do like it would cost me a hundred and fifty dollars. You know, like. Yeah, no, that's not that's not worth it. I know. Well, when's I, the when? Sorry, in, when's the last? In, in Wax, it cost me. I I think in Wax I spent seventy dollars, and I already minted thousands of of NFTs, and I have a ton of RAM left. So. Oh wow! Big difference. You have ten NFTs left that you've minted that haven't been like either given to people who have. Now, is is the majority of payment in XTM then, or do you get paid in other like in Wax ever? Um, I do everything on XTM. I n- I never asked people who to pay in Wax. Uh, there was one account which I wish I remember now to shout them out, but they actually sent me as a gift uh, some Wax. Oh, nice! It was very very nice. But yes, I, I try to do everything through X, XCM, uh, through within Torum. I'm hoping that uh, Torum is supposed to open their own NFT marketplace. So that, yeah. that's something I'm, I'm very much looking forward to. I've seen, uh, I saw that like in their white paper and I was really pumped about that. And then I've mm-hmm. seen the option it's like grayed out here. Let me show, I don't know if you, I'm sure you see this, but maybe it would be good for the, uh, uh, for the podcast to show it. But, uh, let's see. If we go to Torum. Let's, let me do my share screen. Yep. The new, new share. I'll do share screen one. Share. You guys can get the, get the scoop on my, <laughs> on my Torum account. <laughs> now, check this out. I noticed this just the other day. Um, so if I go to my profile, and then if I go to my inventory, look, okay, so we've got gifts, and then we got our, our non-tradable collectibles. Yeah. And then on sale, got a lot, and created... This is the thing that like really got me excited because I'm like, wait a second, what is this? The created one, yeah. It's like, is it are these ones that I've created? It just says coming yeah. soon. You see that? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you've noticed that before, but like I saw it like the other day and it got me really pumped. I but don't anyway. know. Yeah. So and then exclusive. I have no idea what that is either. Just all these. Just they just say coming soon. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but I'm excited to know like what that's gonna be all about. Um, yes, me too. Okay. Uh, well, actually, I, I know they did a an NFT sale, um, and they were selling NFTs to use on the Toro marketplace that will make it so that your account generates more yield when you stake your X- XTM, something like that. Yeah, I saw that too. I didn't understand like what it was all about. It was kind of like I couldn't wrap my head around what it meant. And so I just kind of like watched it unfold. Plus you had to buy them right away. Like they sold out in like 10 minutes or something. 
Yeah. Or maybe like they sold out when I was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was it was crazy when it happened. Like I was I was there. I was ready. I was like, as soon as as it goes live, I'm gonna I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna buy one. And the crazy thing was that as soon as they went live, the Binance network uh, collapsed, and it didn't work uh -huh. at all. So it was it was it was crazy. Do you think that that was because of the amount of activity from the Torum users trying to buy them or something else? I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I think it might, it might have been like, that would have been a factor, but I don't think it was, it was the only factor, but the timing, okay. the, the timing was way too precise to not be a factor at all. Well, that's, kind of good news if there was that much traffic that it like caused the Binance I mean it's not good for like Binance chain obviously but if Torum is generating that level of traffic like yes yes true and that's positive like that's really positive news I would I mean I don't know like just from a from someone who knows enough basically <laughs> I feel like I'm like a hobbyist of sorts with cryptocurrency yeah like, yeah i think like but, mo most of us are there's very few that are, are very into like the technical aspects and stuff like i'm interested in learning more about the technical aspects that's why i write uh like this newsletter that i try to write every week um called flarn chain and basically flarn chain is like my attempt at trying to understand the technical aspects of cryptocurrency um, and then like explaining what I think it is and then asking my readers to like tell me where I'm wrong basically like hey I'm gonna say a bunch of stuff and <laughs> some of it some of it could be wrong so if any of you know more than me please let me know when I'm basically full of crap uh yeah, so that's, yeah that, that's very 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 cool it's a, a, a good way Learn. Yeah, and, and let me know if you uh, want to <laughs> receive the Flarn Chain newsletter uh, every week. Yeah. I write it every single week, um, and then I've been trying to update my my Flarn Chain clan on Torum. Yeah. So I'm up to like uh, issue number nineteen. Wow. Uh, but I've but I've done this week. So this Wednesday I'll be publishing the twenty first Flarn Chain episode. So, um, yeah, yeah, we should I, we should uh, send me all all those links. So when I when I upload the the podcast, I can I can put them on so that people people know. Oh, cool! Yeah, I will. Um, that would yeah, I have actually I have a website too. Uh, that, Perfect. So I'm like trying to learn HTML. Like I'm not a web developer. I'm not a computer mm -hmm. science person. I don't like know that stuff. So I've been like kind of basically going in blind um and just like so the website's like really janky and like funny looking hey what's your favorite color by the way uh purple purple how about how about this is this a good purple or should we should we do a custom color no that's that's, that's perfect this is nice that yeah, we, yeah. we go full full standard um let's see here because i'm like uh, it's, it's really cool what you what you been able to start, to draw. So I guess they're yeah. adding some colors. Let's see here. Let's go like this nice like blue here for the for the uh, what are they called? And I got the Florin coin up here. This is like my <laughs> my, my logo. logo. Yeah. <laughs> it's really cool, man. Little crypto guy. Well, I don't. Chill. Usually on the podcast, what I what I try to do after is I make a um, like an NFT based on the on the guest, so that then I, I can give it away for people who share the podcast to try and get it so it reaches more people. Okay. So I would love to add your little character logo in the in the NFT for this episode. Awesome. Yeah. Um, cool. You can you can do your own version of it if you want, or I can uh, send you a drawing of it. 
Um, it's totally up to you. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the give you the leeway on that because uh, so yeah. What do you do? You, do you want me to send you a drawing or do you want to do a drawing of of the little guy? I don't I don't mind. If you want to send me one, that that would be great because then it would be like a collab collaboration. Yeah, totally. Okay. I love that. I I always hesitate to ask people to do stuff because. I don't want to put more work to to them. Uh, sure. And sometimes, uh, like some people have have told me, like, yes, I want, I'm, let's do this together. But then they don't didn't work as fast as I do. <laughs> yeah, no, collaboration can be tough sometimes. Yes, with that. Yes. And sometimes I I like end up waiting for them. So if if it's if it would be easy for you to do so, then yes, I would love for you to to send me one. If not, okay, yeah. I'm. It's no problem. Uh, cool. Okay, so I will just uh, I'll make sure to take take note of that and not delay. Uh, because <laughs> I, uh, I have I have two recorded episodes that I need to upload before this one, so you you have some time. Okay. Like what's uh what do you what do you think your like release schedule is gonna try or you're gonna try to do like in terms of like what every week or like every other week like what, what's your plan there? Yes, I was I I would love to do twice a week. Twice a week, nice. I would love to, but uh, it's hard at the beginning to get to get the guest. But I'm I'm working working on that. Uh, the I I feel I. It's very obvious that the more episodes you put out, the easier it is to get people interested. Like the first time, it was very it was very hard because there was nothing out, so people didn't know what it was. But now that there's a few episodes out, uh, some people have started asking me to be in the podcast, so that's that makes my everything much much easier. Oh, nice! Yeah, that's that's exciting. Do you have a lot of guests lined up? For the near future, um, I have one for this week. I need to recheck the when it's it's happening, but it's this week. And after that, I have I have some people outside of Torum. I have uh, I asked my cousin to be in it because he just wrote a fantasy book. Oh, cool! Yeah, he wrote the whole novel and he's uh, self-publishing. So I was like, yeah, let's do a podcast. Let's talk about the whole process because it's it's interesting dude that's pretty sweet your yeah. cousin wrote a, a, a novel is it a what type of fantasy is it uh it's, it's like i think it's like lord of the lord of the rings or something like that okay yeah. okay yeah so like high fantasy i guess yeah. is the way i would probably define that cool yeah that's that's definitely a genre that i'm into yeah, I mean, I, I read all the Lord of the Rings books like, yeah, when too. I was a kid. <laughs> I was very, very into those. And then, like, when the movies came out, I mean, they're just amazing. Yes, the movies are, are very, very um, faithful to the yes, Dude, the books. totally. Yeah. As far as, like, um, a, a very detailed book, being made into a movie, I would say Lord of the Rings is one of the best executions of that sort yeah. of. I, I, I think I think so too. I didn't get the same feeling of the the Hobbit movies. No, me neither. Yeah. Oh yeah, I Peter know. Jackson, the director, he basically in the Hobbit movies was just like the executive producer, so uh, okay. he kind of was just like the money guy at that point. And I, I think that it was. It was pretty obvious. It was kind of like a, it seemed to me like a bit of a cash grab, because um, you, you know, the Hobbit book was like not that long of a book. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they turned it into three movies. Like the de <laughs> Desolation of Smog part of the book was like thirty pages, and they turned it into a three-hour movie. Uh, that's yeah. a lot. You got to fill in a lot of details there. <laughs> yeah. Whereas with the with the move, the Lord of the Rings movies, I mean, they basically were filling in. They had to cut content from the books because there yeah, just was true. so much, you know. So I think they just like ran out of source material, and mm. that's that makes it a bit more difficult. 
Let's see yeah. if I can. Yeah, when, when you think about the difference between the three books and the Hobbit, and you, it doesn't make any sense how the movies would be the same length. Doesn't make any sense. No, <laughs> <laughs> but they were able to make three movies, which means that they got three times as many people to buy movie tickets. Yes, yes. And they knew that people would, would, would go and watch them. Exactly. So, I mean, it's, you know, I guess it was a good financial decision for them, but it wasn't good for the fans, in, in my humble opinion. Yeah, true. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, like in movies, that happens so often. Very true. It's very, it's unfortunate. Um, so what have you been drawing? Because uh, uh, I can't see what you're drawing. Right, yes, no, because I'm, I'm doing it on my, I'm recording separately on the phone. I'm doing, hold on, I cannot see myself in this phone. And my three options. Okay. Let's see if you can see it. It's in pencil though. I don't know if you can see it. I can. I'll get the Christmas trees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chicago, the train. <laughs> Dude, that's tight. Uh, fun, fun. I can see that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. I'll I'll maybe do it uh, digital and then you'll you'll see what what my mind was was thinking of. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I was yeah, uh, uh, trying to add the stuff that, that you were talking about. <laughs> cool, dude. That's that's awesome. I um yes, it's getting pretty close to my daughter's bedtime, so I probably need to go yeah, yeah, yeah. in like the next minute. But I wanted to at least this is like the one thing that I found when I put like a frame <laughs> around any drawing that that's uses cool. the same colors. <laughs> it like actually it has good. it actually makes it look a little bit more legit yeah yeah for sure i mean this is this is what i got so far i probably got to put something in here so i'll probably do that later i'll play play around with it yeah um like i don't i don't think i could, I could do that in, on on paint i have no idea anything. how you actually pull it off Maybe I'll just like put a really big pencil right here, like encased oh, yeah. in a bunch of patterns. Um, and then I'll, uh, I'll finish it up with all the colors and I'll, uh, I'll just send it to you yeah, as, yeah. Uh, please, please do. as just like a, like a, just a normal image file. And then you can do whatever you want with it. Or if you want, I could, I could mint it on wax um, and I could like mint two of them and and send one to you and or, or or we i could just throw it i could just throw it up as a as a free-for-all i noticed like the free-for-all grab bags that show up on <laughs> on Torum every day it's like non-stop like free nft yeah, yeah i'll just like put it i'll knit like a hundred of them well i wouldn't i wouldn't want to do that because it's got your sort of it's got your your name in it so well, i don't i'll know. just send it to I, you i don't i don't mind <laughs> okay yeah we'll just like <laughs> <laughs> it'll be our collab yeah, um, yeah honestly do do whatever you would like with it and if you send it to me i can i can add some some of my stuff to it and cool yeah i'll do that i'm just gonna send it to you as just an image file and then yeah. you can do whatever you want with it and then we'll see what what comes of that yeah it'll be fun i, I still that... i still have no tablet but it should be coming in the next couple couple of days so awesome man yeah. well i i wish you best of luck on receiving that tablet because i know how hard that can be to be like Dude, when like your technology breaks and you can't use it anymore and like you've been using it every day like that's the worst thing yeah, yeah in the world it is so um but yeah so i gotta get going uh it was really nice to meet you uh seriously uh i'd love to do this again sometime we can refine that, yeah we can refine our uh our format and 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 get get it <laughs> uh more uh get over time get more professional yeah, it'll, yeah it'll be definitely, fun definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so no seriously i really appreciate you taking the time to, to do this with me though you too man thanks thanks all right take care H have have a good day you too bye bye, -bye.
All right, so I'm not going to leave as well. Cheers. Ciao.